What's going on, Clutch? What? What up, what up, what up? It's your boy Dup. It's your boy Ross. We in the Clutch, baby. Hey! Back to you, ladies and gentlemen, with another digital day, you feel me? All right, we're going to check out Drew Binksky, five near death experiences after visiting every country. Now, this is the person we've checked out so many times, Sorry, and we always make the joke like, man, he be, he be asking for it. He be coming close to, to some dangerous situations. Well, apparently, there's been a few times where he may have potentially lost his life. He not but, as close as the other dude that be... Which it'd be, one? It'd be the cameraman and said, I ain't coming in other situations. And then he oh. was going anyway. I thought know. it was this guy. Nah, was- nah, bro. The other dude, remember the other guy? Um, He went, Uh, where did he go? He went somewhere. I think I know who you're talking about. The, it's the dude, I- the, the dude who did the little temperature Um, where it was like no oxygen or less oxygen. Oh, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. He be tripping, bro. I mean, he 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 in that camp too. He in no, that trippy camp. Well, other, dude, other, <laughs> but, dude, other dude be getting signs. They be like, "Hey, bro, the cameraman just suddenly said he can't go." Yeah, well, I, guess <laughs> I gotta do it myself. No, nigga. No, no. Uh, All right, let's let's check this out. See what countries he uh may have encountered some near death experiences. Every country in the world, I can tell you that the chances of running into trouble are quite high. No, hey, Whoa! Put the camera. Whoa! Hey, I'm glad we. We ain't this. even gotta go back to it, but you <laughs> saw it. Saw it very well, very clear, in 4K. Damn, straight, bro. I don't need these kind of problems when I try to go somewhere, man. I want to go in peace to have fun, not in the trenches. <laughs> well, he he in the trenches for real. They over here saying, man, put, put the camera down, man. What? Damn. <laughs> Especially in places like Sao Paulo, Brazil, where I am right now. Getting robbed, scammed, or kidnapped are serious Damn. concerns that every traveler should be aware of. Holy nah, I've had nah, bro. Nah, just bro. in daylight, just just nah, bro. Mm-mm. Many close encounters in war-torn countries and conflict zones, and unfortunately, I've had my fair share of hospital visits. Oh man! In this video, I'm going to share with you five near-death experiences that still traumatize me to this day. I don't know if I can have it. We begin in Haiti. Uh oh. So I went to Haiti a few months ago, and man, it was one of the most intense experiences of my entire life. So Port-au-Prince is yeah, probably in the top three most dangerous places. What'd you say? Uh, also, I know they had like a lot going on. Uh, yeah. Recently, well, but that I had heard of. So, yeah. With the games well, and then... I mean, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, Before there, know. can you just stop and chill and get a shoe shine on the side of the street? And I mean it. Gangs are controlling the whole city. Yeah. So I made a local friend named Sean. How are we doing, man? Oh. Nice Sean, to meet you. Yeah. And he knows the gang members. So he took me inside a place called Cite Soleil, which is, man, I'm just trying to trying to catch my breath here as I think about what I saw. Truck barricaded, oh. trash everywhere. The smell of that trash burning is horrific. Fully big weaponed gangs. That are controlling this area. So when you when you go down the long road to get to the checkpoint, you see Damn all these gangsters. And when I say gangsters, I mean like guys with grills in their teeth, teardrop tattoos, neck tattoos, and massive automatic weapons that you'd have to see to believe. They run and greet you at the car and they're like, hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? Give me money, give me money. That moment was the closest I've ever been to getting kidnapped in my life. Are you sure we're gonna be okay, man? Yeah, yeah we good, we good, don't worry. I was planning Yeah, yeah we good, we good, we good. Man, well, I'm I don't good. I even know you, bro. <laughs> but you Right. Your your skin complexion may say otherwise. <laughs> hey, you might be a lick. Hey, man, yeah, like on dude. the cool. He probably worth some money, man. Yeah. Mm-mm. Look at that facial expression. <laughs> I wouldn't even try to pause it there. It look like a, a, a Eminem music video. <laughs> His real name's Clarence. <laughs> no, it's not. Thing <laughs> on it happening and figuring out how I was going to get out of the situation. Sure enough, we just ended up paying them off, paying them off, and I Damn. trusted Sean, and they let us in. Then I had to go meet the chief of the whole slum, and he took me inside, and we met in this sketchy room with blasting music, and then I had to slap like $1,000 in his hand, and I had Oh, you got me. F- I mean, well, you don't, because I'm in your territory. But uh, Yeah. Basically, he checked in. <laughs> they made this white American check in, bro. For your video. Yeah, he checked in bro like what's up 
This nigga got a Lakers jersey on, a LeBron for, James Lakers For the content, man. For the content. He, he checked in for the content. Oh. And that was a crisp hundred just boom. Yeah, this look like brand new. Like, you know how brand, it was straight? Bro, like he went iron? to him before he came there because I'm yeah. pretty sure homie like, hey, you may want to have you some grand on you. Bro, Ghost do right. You stupid. What'd he say? The devil is not welcome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you know, you know. That you was know. the beginning part. And then he appointed his soldiers, which are basically thugs with weapons, to come join us and escort us around. Six of them. This guy's working with a bag of bullets. Damn. And a bulletproof vest. And then as I Damn, walked around, the... I interviewed the guys the and they told me from? that in order to be a soldier and get a weapon, you have to do a series of kidnappings. And I was like, oh, great, cool. So Walking how do you not know way, I saw things... that you not an initiation? Yeah, bro. This nigga Drew, bro. <laughs> he does it all for our entertainment on YouTube. Why? Thank you, Drew. I give it to Drew, bro. Cause... <laughs> Drew is, no. he got it, man. I wouldn't know about this if it wasn't for Drew. Facts. You know? We're not talking about Drew McIntyre. <laughs> not at all, bro. He said nobody should ever see. There were houses that were completely flooded because they didn't have the means to leave. And when the rain comes, it, this lady was walking Ew. in like ankle high of water in her house. I mean, it was super sad. She would love to uh, rent another house, but she doesn't have the need. I've never been to a community where there's literally no place to buy water or food. Like, like they literally have nothing. There's no jobs. And there's a lot of people there. It's Damn. really, really, really intense. Gunshots are everywhere. You hear them when you walk around. Like, the feeling of just being so hesitant and the feeling of presence around you that are just staring at you. And at any given moment, things can go bad was very much a threat to me and my safety. And you might ask, why did I do it? And it's because I'm really curious about how other people are living around the world. And I will go the extra mile to well, find curious, human right. stories yeah. in these places. And try also, to find positivity, but cat. here in Cinque Soleil, I didn't find anything. If you're from Haiti and watching this, I'm sorry to say this, but the country really is going through rough times and I hope it can be better because when I went on the airplane flying in, it was beautiful views and it has a lot of potential yeah, as a beautiful, beautiful destination yeah. in the Caribbean, but things got to be fixed. I mean, the president was assassinated. They haven't really replaced him since then. I just read in the news recently that like, no, thank you. Okay. I just read in the news recently that um, one of the jails was broken loose and all the criminals are running on the streets. Anyways, Haiti's a mess. I hope to go back to there when it's a little safer a and a little better, but for man. now, I'm in no hurry. Real quick, guys, I just want to let you know uh, that my very damn, first book comes out on May wild, 21st, bro. and you can pre-order it by with a big afro, and I was traveling around the world, making money as a travel blogger and Snapchatter oh, experience, which was in India back in 2015 when I was a young budget backpacker with a big afro, and I was traveling around the world, making money as a travel blogger. What does he look like? Like shaggy, right? Facts. Like a shaggy. Yep. yep. Raggy. Scoop. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga was traveling the world high as fuck. Right. Solving mysteries. Backpacker. <laughs> oh my God, dog. Facts. Or Ed Ed Sheeran. Sheeran. Yeah. Look, that's the, or Sammy's uh, Sammy Zane's younger brother. <laughs> <laughs> Day before YouTube. <sighs> All right, this story gives me a lot of PTSD when I when I think back. But I was at the tail end of a three month journey around India, spending five hundred dollars a month doing it super budget. Really enjoyed it, loved wow. it, but India is that's really cheap. intense. My true colors came out in that trip and I learned more about myself than any other trip I've ever taken. I was in the Rajasthan state and I was on a bus from Udaipur to Jodhpur, which is about a 10 hour overnight bus. Uh -oh. I was the only foreigner on the bus, the only English speaker, and yep, I was on the top deck, right. the double decker. So at midnight, bus leaves. When I got on the bus, I remembered feeling that it was kind of creaky. It was like a little weird, it was a little old bus, and I remember feeling a little uncomfortable. But anyways, I just went with the flow. I went to my upper bunk and I walked in and I went up the ladder and I laid down. About an hour into the bus ride, I was just getting cozy. I had my headphones in. I was listening to some music and I was kind of dozing off, but I was still very much awake. Out of nowhere, the bus driver slams on the brakes, turned the wheel to the left, and the bus flew off the freeway over the median. We probably dropped about five feet. We're probably going about 50 miles an hour. Oh, the bus shit. completely Damn. flipped over on the side that I was laying on. So literally my nose was like three inches from the ground. All the windows shattered. Everybody's screaming and crying. There were babies on board. I remember there was so much dirt and glass in the air and so much chaos that when I opened my eye to look up, I had to look through the little crack of my fingers because I could barely see anything because of all the debris. And there was a kid's Whoa. shoe right above me because he was hanging. He was holding onto the pole. About 10 minutes later, which felt like 10 weeks later, I had to get out of the bus and 
I, meanwhile, I'm seeing blood everywhere, people screaming and crying, and, and it was it was literally like a horror film. It was the scariest moment of my life to this day. In order to get out of the bus, I had to go through the side, which all the windows were shattered, so I had to go through, and then I was standing on top, and then I had to jump down, which was like a 10-foot jump down, and I had all my bags with me. So there Damn. I am, going up, seeing blood everywhere, and seeing uh, people that are like stuck in the bus. The bus kind of split, and people were like stuck in it. I don't know how to explain it any better than that. But I get out the bus, I'm sitting, standing on the side of the road, shaking like this for an hour. People are coming out, screaming and crying, and I'm getting guys that are doing this sign, signifying that two people were stuck in the bus, and they didn't make it out alive. And I know oh. that because they told me, and I saw them. Sorry, I feel like someone's going to steal a GoPro out of my hand right now, so I'm holding it down. People are approaching me. <laughs> it's funny that I'm telling this story when I'm in a sketchy street corner in Sao Paulo. Why is this nigga getting his shoe clean? Right. Someone said this nigga got plot armor. Factuals. He got but something. Rest in peace to those yeah, individuals that didn't make it. Man. Damn, that's tough. Anyways, um... Yeah, so long story short, I get out of the bus. I'm waiting on the side of the road for like three hours, and Damn. another bus comes and picks me up and takes me to Jodhpur, which is another like eight hours. And the whole time, I'm literally shaking. Like every time the bus hit the brake, I was like freaking out. I thought yeah, I was going to get right. another crash. And I remember calling my mom, and she was like, You need to get on the next plane home. And I had a beard out to here. I had just been in India for three months. And the craziest part to end this story was I was going to Kathmandu right after to hike the base camp of Mount Everest. And when I was on the plane, the massive earthquake hit where 10,000 people died. And we felt the earth shaking when I was on the runway in Delhi because it's not that far from Kathmandu. Whoa! That was one week after the bus crash. And after that, I went back to Chicago. I was in total shock. And uh, yeah, God, that was yeah, yeah, I, bet, you. I bet you I stayed home for a little bit. God, I was hey. trying to tell you. Yo. That is crazy, bro. Crazy. A really scary time in my life. My next near-death experience happened to me in Chad. And I'm keeping my camera low right now because I'm walking in kind of a sketchy area. Johnson? And a lot of people are around me looking at my camera. So, Jemena, Chad. Oh, what a place. 2019 was the oh, year. Ultra. I was traveling around Africa by myself. And I find myself in Chad. What's up, Chad? Now, I don't know if you know much about Chad, but let's just say it's not the greatest Somebody place in the Gable. world. Very hostile. <laughs> People are not welcoming. There's really not that much to do. It's the hottest place you've ever been because in the Sahara Desert. There's a lot Ooh. of UN cars and it's just very, very intense. So I get to Chad. I make a friend of a friend through Instagram. First of all, the airport when I arrive is covered in cockroaches. I remember this guy oh. sweeping a broom with all oh, the cockroaches. What? You scraping oh. like the June get bugs that be flying <laughs> to the front door. Ray oh, ain't gonna get rid of them. Nah. They immune to that shit. Nah, nigga, what's up? And <laughs> meet up with a friend of a friend who picked me up at the airport and actually was a pretty nice guy. He was more like a bodyguard. He was a huge guy. Everyone there is tall. Take me to my hotel, sleep. Next day, we're gonna go explore the city. So we get in a motorbike taxi and he gets in another one. My driver kept going really fast and we got we lost touch with my other guy. So we're going through the dirt streets of Jimena. I mean fast. It's getting really sketchy and I keep uh, yelling at my driver. I was like hitting his back like stop 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 And I don't know speak French and they speak French so I was like couldn't communicate to him and uh, It turns out we were stuck in a police chase all these police cars started chasing us. Oh, I got dirt in my eye just now. Oh I got like some serious dirt in my eye. It's ironic because I'm telling a story about being on a dirt bike in jazz <laughs> What? And I'm struggling telling this story right now. Jesus Christ um, so I'm stuck in this police chase going through the streets of Jamana fast running red lights, Why cars are coming taking... at us. And I keep telling the driver to stop, stop, stop. And he's not stopping. So finally, I like went over his shoulder and pulled the brake and stopped it. He gets off the bike and starts running. A massive brawl starts in front of me right on the street. And I'm just trying to stay safe. Meanwhile, my phone wasn't working. I didn't have a SIM card and I lost my friend. And I didn't know what the name of our hotel. I just didn't remember, I didn't write it down. <sighs> so I'm stuck on the side of the street and I don't know what to do with myself. So I jump in a random little mini bus. Okay, so there I am, middle of chat on a mini bus. Of course, I'm documenting everything because I, at this time I was making videos and I share my honest experiences around the world. And so I get in this mini bus, catch my breath for a second. I'm holding my camera in my hand. So I started taking a picture of this cute little kid in the bus. Well, I, lesson learned, I should not have taken a picture of the kid without the parent's permission. And since that moment, I've learned and I've never done it without asking permission if I take a photo of a kid. And mm. so I did it and then everyone freaked out on the bus. They were like yelling, like, why are you taking this picture? You have without permission, blah, blah, blah. So then I get out of, I get out of that mini bus and whenever there's kind of commotion people kind of gather around and find figure out that there's something happening so basically uh -oh. some dude pulls out a knife and is like what are you doing here and i Whoa. was like holy f thankfully out of nowhere my buddy who i was with before finds me and runs up and just like 
protects me and kind of puts his arm out like, whoa, 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 what's going on, what's going on? I remember some dude grabbed my shirt and twisted it like this and like oh. broke the seam of my shirt here. So oh, I was like, yeah. Why I oughta? He was about to get gg bro. Yeah, when someone grit, grips the, the top of your shirt and twists, why I oughta? That's... This nigga say sound like he was in your GTA server yesterday. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> It was a police chase. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, literally, like it looked like I had just gotten beaten up. So yeah, then my friend comes and breaks up the fight and I think if my friend didn't come, I literally would have been slashed or robbed or something yeah. even worse. I didn't even know where my hotel was. Can you imagine? So we calm down a little bit. He takes me to this shisha bar <laughs> and I go outside to pee and I step in a massive pile of human <laughs> Like massive pile. It's like everyone pooped in one spot. And so then I got back to my hotel later that night and I booked a flight out the next day. I will say though, I'm planning that to give Chad a second chance. I want to go back and visit some tribes in the south. It looks really I'm awesome. Go back. That's, that's, that's something about. <laughs> is this something about fucking around, finding out? That... He learned his lesson no, from the did. last time. He he learned his lesson. Now he's yeah. he's well prepared. Yeah, gotcha. Now the nigga with that knife was like, ah, my blade wanted to taste that neck of yours. <laughs> And I'm actually planning to go soon. Wait. Hopefully you guys will Sound be about on that right. journey. All right, now my fourth near-death experience is going to be a two-part story in Syria and in Yemen. And they both have to do with being almost in a terrorist attack. Let's start off in Syria. First off, Syria is amazing. Well, I had a great time there and I really hope to go back. I love the people, the culture. The country's gone through some really rough times in the last 15 years with war and everything, but I was scheduled to go. Man, I almost just lost my GoPro. Literally, this dude walked up taking a selfie and he kind of jolted at me and I walked away. I'm not joking. Maybe I should sit down here and have a coffee while I tell this story. Oh, oh so, cold boys. You see Cup. it. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> the cold they boys. Are armed and ready. They are always around. <laughs> yeah, sit down. What's up, bro? Oh. Boys just sniffing at you and all that, like trying to get Is you. Is he walking face? around with a fucking camera? Give a fuck. I'm walking around, around with camera. No, don't don't snatch it, my shit. See, this is why I'm not meant to to go certain places because I I can't take my southern mentality everywhere. Oh my and god! You have to you have to become <laughs> new again every time. It's like the servers in RP. You gotta create a new character every time you travel somewhere. <laughs> the Coke Boys. The Coke Boys back in town. Okay, what up? We got them. Not it's always the Crotus. Okay, so Syria. Good morning from Damascus, my very outside. first day in Syria, country number 183. 183. I was heading to a place called Palmyra, which is in the desert, kind of on the eastern side of the country. And it's an old historic town, it's a UNESCO site, it's really, really cool ruins. And I was really excited to go. And we were in the car, we were heading there. It's a long drive, it's like four hours or something. And while we're in the car, we get a call that there's been an attack at the checkpoint that we're about to cross. I don't know how far we were from the checkpoint, maybe a half hour, an hour. And there was gunfire and people died at that checkpoint. There was an attack, an explosion. Oh. We just missed it. So we turned back and went to Damascus. I can't imagine what would have happened if we were at that checkpoint when that happened. The next yeah. right. almost terrorist attack that I just missed was in Shibam, Yemen. So Yemen's also a really crazy, cool country. I happen to love it. Beautiful, untouched nature. Unbelievable. I think all things considered as a tourist, it's the most dangerous country in the world. Jeez. Mainland Yemen, not Socotra. And I was on an eight day road trip by myself with a local friend in mainland Yemen. And we were in the southern a part. A lot of friends. There's this really cool old town in the desert called Shibam. It's a UNESCO site. It's called Manhattan of the Desert because there's like 15th century buildings that are made of mud brick and they're like 10, Not 15, 20 floors King high. And it's there. super old, like five, 600 years old. And I really wanted to see it. So I'm with my guide, Abdul, who was pretty sketchy the whole time. And similar to the serious story, we're about to roll up to the checkpoint. My guy gets a call, turn around right now. There was an attack at the checkpoint, literally. Oh my God. And my guide was pretty cool. He kept a composure the whole time. He was pretty chill. Like he didn't really show signs of fear or danger. And at that moment he was like, holy shit, we need to leave right now, right now. So we turn around. The problem was we needed to go through Shibam to get to the next city. And there was only two roads to get to the city. And then we had to turn and divert the other way. So we waited out like an hour and then we ended up taking the other kind of back country road to get back to Shibam. So not where the explosion was around. And we ended up getting to Shabam. I had five minutes, literally five minutes to explore the town. I remember running around, taking pictures, meeting people. It was the coolest place I've been in the Middle East, Shabam. I'm telling you, these skyscrapers in the desert, it's so awesome. So, so, so awesome. Shabam. 
I went to a nearby mountain and I got this cool drone shot looking down. No, that's mountain. tough. But I only was able to spend five minutes on the street there. End up, there really was an attack. Uh, we just missed it by literally 10 minutes and uh, I got in, got out. I have more stories about almost missing terrorist attacks. There was a place in Bamiyan, Afghanistan. A week after I left, it was blown up and 30 people in the same market I was shooting at was killed. Whoa. And also in Baghdad, the last time I went there, I was shooting in this big market. The day that I flew out, which was the day after I was shooting, another big attack. Literally the same street stalls that I was featuring in my video, the same street vendors wow. no longer there. So why am I telling this stuff? Because it happened and because I like to be honest and transparent um, during my travels and let you guys know that it's not always rainbows and ponies. Like, just hit the fan and I'm here for the ride, so. Oh, we know. We know you there for the ride, yeah. You go right on. There's one more story I want to yep. tell you guys in this video. And that is on the border of North Korea and Russia. Mm. I was traveling in Siberia uh, in February. Oh, That's the story I was waiting on. It was cold, but I loved it. I went to Yakutsk, the world's coldest inhabited city. It was like minus 40 degrees when I was there. Frozen. And then I went to a place called Vladivostok, which I've always wanted to visit because A, the name is cool, and B, it's a very Asian city near Seoul and Tokyo, and the people look Asian, but it's Russia, and I was really interested in that. So I went to Vladivostok, and I met a local girl who's a really, really cool girl. That's I'm blanking on her name right now, but she's a YouTuber. I'll link her channel down below. And I told her I wanted to go to the nearby town on the border of Russia and North Korea because there's an 11 kilometer strip of land that borders North Korea and Russia, and it's super interesting because I have a fascination with North Korea. I've been there. I have many North Korean friends. I've made many stories on North Korean refugees. I can speak Korean because I lived in South Korea for two years. I took a class about North Korea in college. I'm like obsessed oh, with we remember. So we, we take a six hour drive down <laughs> to the border. On the way, we stopped at these frozen waterfalls, which were crazy. I've never seen waterfalls literally freeze in there. That's and crazy. I'm in a car with three other Russians and myself. That's one true. being my camera guy, Andre, one being uh, the driver, and then one being uh, my local friend. And the rules are a little vague about getting to this town. I read online that you might need a permit to get to the Russian town on the border of North Korea. I also read that you can just go. So knowing me, I just went. The drive down there is fine. There's no checkpoints. And right when we get to the actual border town, the Russian town of Kasan, which is right on the border of North Korea, there was a police stop. And I saw it from the back of the car and I was like, oh I was sitting in the back left seat of the car, okay? The three other people had Russian passports, I have a US passport. So we get to the checkpoint. We have big, like Soviet style, big furry hats, very intimidating, mm -hmm. big fat police mm -hmm. officers in the car. Documento, documento. documento passport check for the documento. driver, good. Passport yeah. check for my friend, good. Passport check for my other friend. Passport check for my camera guy, good. I thought he was just gonna wave us in. And he goes, you, passports. And I was like, <laughs> So slowly take out my passport, give it to him. He look at US passport, goes, hmm. Flips through. Visa, visa, visa. Like I needed a special permit in my passport to enter this Russian town. My Russian visa wasn't good enough. I needed a special one. Damn. Didn't have it. Immediately he goes, you, come here now. Phone, leave in the car. Friends, stay here. All in Russian, but I understood what he was saying. Hey, yo. <laughs> oh, man. The, he might as well have said, if he dies, he, he dies. dies. <laughs> That's, he might as well have just told that nigga. Yeah, bro. <laughs> if he dies, he dies. I would have, I would have. Man. Nah, you know what? I can go back. I can go. Yeah, I can... nah, man. You know what? I ain't nah, even trying nah, to go see what's over friend. there. Come, come, come. I'm not going to ask you again. Come. <laughs> no. Please, no, man. I just I just want to go see the border, man. Let me, let me, let me make it, man. Saying through hand motion. So I had to leave my phone in the car. I was wearing a lav mic like this under my shirt. So I had to like secretly take it off because they would have thought I was like a CIA. Like, oh, spying yeah. On that. This was right when the war with Ukraine was heating up. It was not an official Whoa. attack yet, but there was news that Russia was gonna invade Ukraine. And of course, the US is involved in everything. Yeah. So my friends have to stay behind. I get in the police car with these three policemen with no phone. They drive me up this big steep hill, take me to their headquarter office with barbed wires. It was like a old compound. Slam the door, strip search me, full on strip search, like nude. Then they escort me into this room upstairs and they lock the door and there's a big picture of Putin on the wall and it's freezing, there's no heat in there. And oh my God. Bro, oh, hell no, oh, bro. I would have thought I was going to get All because cooked. the nigga didn't have the paperwork. They, oh, and they, man. And they, and they could do it. Yo, welcome to the gulags. They, be, bro, basically, dog. Yeah, that nigga bro. got a trip to the gulags without even losing his life, bro. For free. He got a <laughs> free round trip, all expenses paid to the gulags. Yeah. And all you get to see is Putin's face in front of you. Like, the last thing. Get comfortable. You're going to be here for a while, bucko. Right. It looked like a classroom at the kindergarten. And there I am, sitting there. They locked me inside for about 30 minutes, which felt like three hours. 
I have no phone. Imagine being stuck in a building right now without a phone and freezing and not knowing what to do. And meanwhile, out the window, I could see the border of North Korea, which is literally like just a stone throw away. Eventually, a guy comes in and said he had a translator with him, which he spoke maybe 20 words of English. We were just communicating through Google <laughs> Translate for about 20 minutes. Asked me every question under the book. What's your name? Where are you from? What's your business? Why are you here? What's the name of your wife? What's your dog's name? Where'd you go to university? Why damn! You <laughs> Why you want to know about Blondie? Just right. answer the question. Or, or everyone goes. <laughs> Answer the damn question. What Blondie oh, got to do with this? The dog name. That's wild, bro. Damn. Nah, I'm good on. I mean, we we saw it with uh Britney. Uh, was it Britney Griner? Yeah. That yeah, whole no. with that whole situation, they yeah, had this... her there for a minute, bro. Like, no. nah, bro. Just nah. Leave. Just just don't. Just don't go to Russia, bro. <laughs> don't, just don't why do you it. like North Korea? Why do you like Russia? Why have you been? To, they were looking through my passport. Why have you been to Turkmenistan? Why have you been to Iran? And so all the questions were coming. Finally, I was like crying and begging and convincing them to oh. let me bring my friends in because I couldn't talk to them and I needed someone to bail me out. So they let my friends in. So sitting at this table, they're still asking questions. Every question under the book. Long story short, they threatened to put me behind bars and, and then threatened to throw me back to the U.S. and never being allowed in Russia. And I just really apologized. I was like very, very honest. Like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know I can't be here, blah, blah, blah. And so long story short, I had to sign like 30 pages. They printed all these pages saying that I will not come here. If I'm ever seen again at any border town in Russia, I'm immediately thrown out of the country and, and have to pay a massive fine and all this stuff. So I ended up getting out after three hours being in this freaking compound. I got out and Hell I went back no, to Bloody Bell stop and I was so shaken up. I like couldn't sleep for that 24 hours and I could have been the next Britney Griner. I mean, a week after I left Russia, which was two weeks after this um, detainment happened, Putin invaded Ukraine and the whole war started. And then Britney Griner, that famous women's basketball player mm -hmm. uh, playing on the Phoenix Mercury, was uh, caught in the Russia airport for having some weed on her and she was held up locked for nine months. I could have been nine the months. Griner. So glad I got out. And then those are five near death experiences. Hey, that man. Um. Done, bro. I'm good, bro. Russia is Mother Russia is not for me. <laughs> it's not for me, nope. especially my skin. Oh, what? What? Oh, titanium. But I, I didn't do that. He's That's resisting. Aggressive. What? I don't even know what that word is, but I feel like I should use it. That's kind of racist, bro. <laughs> Nah, Hopefully bro. nobody from like, watching it now, but we they love can't. They can't, bro. Most of the videos don't keep reach Russia no more. You know that? <laughs> they don't reach Russia no more. Like, you never know, bro. Somebody probably got that secret browser, man. Or VPN. the VPN. Well, they got this. I don't know how they feel about VPNs. So, uh, look, hey, hey. You know what? I'm gonna leave it alone. Hey, <laughs> I'm gonna leave it alone. Somebody said the ring. Da -da -da -da. The ring. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> he walk in. <laughs> Tell me why I shouldn't get it rid of you. But, you, you, wait, what? <laughs> what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be here. <laughs> Mother Russia. Oh, hey, man. Nah. Somebody said nuke it. No. No. They want that. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, no. They want Don't you to play nuke. them games. Don't do it. <laughs> Reconsider, please. Yeah. That's, first, the Coke boys, not a vodka boys. Hey. <laughs> They not playing. But hey, if y'all enjoyed that video, man, you already know what to do. He just got banned from North Korea. Oh, no, I'm good on it, bro. I'm good on that, man. You banned from Russia. You banned from North Korea. Those are signs. <laughs> I'm good on it, bro. <laughs> Take them. But no, nah, man, if y'all enjoyed the video, you already know what to do, man. Make sure you yeah. like, subscribe. What else should we be checking out, man? Have you traveled anywhere and had an almost near uh, mm -hmm. experience? You know what I mean? Let us know in the comments down below. Where did you go? What happened? Uh, keep on spreading, uh, spreading love, being love. Let us know so that way we know where not to go and what not to do. But love you guys. Peace out. Already. This bitch is from Houston. If you got a problem, then we got the solutions. And there's no illusion. I made this shit happen. I'm living life lucid. I'm switching my strategies. Now they hate on me because I'm causing casualties. But why are they after me? Deep inside, they know they can't handle half of me.